So we're going to look at eigenvalues now. We'll start with the definition of an eigenvalue first. So we're going to start out with a matrix. How do you know that A is a matrix just off of what is on the screen? How do you know it's not a vector? So it's M by N. So if it was a vector, it would just be RM or RN. But matrix is going to come from M by N space. And actually, I need a square matrix here. So we'll go N by N. All right, so given given matrix A, lambda in real numbers, so lambda is a scalar. Lambda is an eigenvalue. If there is a non-zero a non-zero vector x in R n such that a x equals lambda x And such a vector x is called an eigenvector. So we're going to look at this equation a little bit more carefully. It's kind of strange because on the left side you have a matrix times a vector. On the right side you have a scalar times a vector. And they're equal. So we need to look at the dimensions to make sure this even makes sense to set these two things equal to each other. So we're going to do what we always do, look at the dimensions. So we know A is m, uh, n by n. What dimensions will x have? So x is in n-dimensional space, so one of the two dimensions will be n. So we're going to write our vectors out as column vectors unless uh, I'll say otherwise if we're not going to. So it's going to have n columns or n rows and then one column. So it'll be a uh, tall thin matrix. So what we will get when we multiply, what dimension will we have when we multiply these together? n by 1. We'll get the outer dimensions. So what we're going to be left with will look just like a vector. It'll be n rows and one column. All right, and we'll look at now at the other side, lambda x. So x again is an n by 1. What happens if you multiply a vector by a scalar in terms of the dimension? Does the dimension change? Nope. So it's still going to be an m by 1. So good news is at least they have the same number of coordinates. So we're going to get a vector on each side. And they'll have the same number of coordinates. So the dimensions match up. Now what we're going to do is look at how in the world this could work out. Now notice this does not say for all x's. This says for a non-zero x. It doesn't say for every single x. There's no way it's going to work for every x. So what we're going to do first, I'm just going to give you an example. And we're going to show that, an, that there is an eigenvector. So we're going to show x equals 1, 1 is an eigenvector of what dimensions will A have to have? got to be 2 by 2. So it's got to be square so we don't change the size of the vector when we multiply by it. So it's going to be a 2 by 2. This particular matrix will be 3, 1, 1, 3. So 
So show it's an eigenvector and find the corresponding eigenvalue. So all we have right now is a definition. So all we can really do is use a definition. <coughs> so we got AX equals lambda X. Now you probably haven't written lambda next to X before, but as you can see, if your lambda, uh, if you're a little lazy with your lambda, you can very easily turn your lambda into an X. So make sure when you write lambda, it looks like a lambda, not an x. So again, it's easy to make a lambda and it look like an x. Just bring that second piece up a little higher. And then you have an ambiguous lambda. All right, all we have is ax. So let's go ahead and multiply it. So we're going to cross down. So we have 3 plus 1. And our second row will be 1 plus 3. And that will be 4, 4. <coughs> so we got ax equals lambda x. I'll just write the result of AX here. So AX was 4, 4, and our X vector was 1, 1. All right, easy question, what's lambda? 4, very good. So this was pretty easy right here. 4 is our lambda value. So if you have an eigenvector, you can get your eigenvalue just this easily. You just multiply and see what multiple it is. What do you think the chance of just grabbing a random vector and it being an eigenvector is? Pretty low. So if you just pick a vector, maybe one, two, and we try it. Let's go ahead and just pick. Let's try one, two. Is it an eigenvector? an eigenvector of the same matrix A. So all we're going to do is compute AX <coughs> and then is it equal to a scalar times X? So A3113 X12 So we got 3 plus 2. Now we have 1 plus 6. So we have 5, 7. All right, is there a scalar such that 5, 7 equals lambda times x, which is 1, 2? So lambda has to be 5 and seven halves simultaneously. So there's no lambda that's going to make this work. And you can spell lambda, it's lamb with a duh at the end, just like you say it. So there's no such lambda. All right, so that, that means is this one two is not an eigenvector. So you have multiplied a few matrices by vectors before. It was pretty rare that it came out that your final product was just a scalar multiple. Because you're doing all these weird additions all over the place. It's very rare that those lead to the same thing as multiplying by a scalar. So it is quite rare. So why would it be really lame to allow zero as an eigenvector?
So if the zero was an eigenvector, what's a times zero vector? Zero vector. And then lambda could be anything. And it's always true. So zero is really lame as a eigenvector, so we just don't allow it. So zero is out. It does follow the property, but lambda doesn't matter anymore. So that's why we don't use it. So a much harder question is if I give you an eigenvalue, what eigenvectors correspond to that value? So all I've really given you is a definition. So we don't have very much to work off of. So I'm just going to write the definition down again. That's another important reason I have definitions on your cheat sheet. If you're not sure how to proceed, you could at least write the definition of an eigenvector down and then maybe reconstruct it from the definition. So what we're given is A and lambda. What we're not given is X. So our A, one, two, four, three. I don't know X. Lambda is five. All right, we have an algebra problem to solve. How can we solve for x? There's an x on both sides. Can you turn x into a vector of like x1, x2? So I, I can definitely write x as a vector. How many coordinates will x have? It will be 2 by 1. It will be 2 by 1. So I can write down x is, let's just go with a, b. That'll work. So x is any vector in R2, so I'll just call it AB. You can call it XY if you want to, but I don't want to reuse X because it's already in use for the vector. All right, so I could write this out. Uh, but before we do that, let's just think about a little bit more algebra. And let's, we don't even need to know A and lambda. How would you solve for X in this AX equals lambda X? You've done algebra before. There is no division, so you can't divide by x. Plus, that would eliminate it. That wouldn't solve for it. Subtract a, get x on one side. By so we're going to subtract a term to get on the other side. Doesn't matter which way you go. So I'll just subtract the lambda x. What is now on the right side of this equation? What zero? zero vector. The zero vector. So you're going to subtract two vectors. You're going to get a vector, not a number. So we got the zero vector on the right side. All right, what can I do next? Factor out the x. Factor out the x. We have a huge problem. What I wrote is undefined. Let's look at this. Why is a minus lambda undefined? Because um, a is matrix. 2 by 2 and lambda is 2 by 1. So a is a matrix, lambda is scalar. So I can't subtract a matrix and a, and a number. No matter how hard I try, it's not going to work. So what I wrote down doesn't make any sense. We do need to factor x out, but I can't do it like this. There is one thing we're allowed to multiply and not change a vector or a matrix. What is that one thing? Identity. Identity. Well, you can multiply by the number one as well. But if I put the number one here, that's not going to save us. That's still going to be a number of matrix minus a number. So what we'll do first. Oh, 
I'm going to multiply by the identity. And I'm going to multiply in the middle. Normally that would be a very legal move, except the identity is special because it doesn't change anything. So I can multiply, as long as I have the dimensions correct, I can multiply it basically anywhere I want. As long as there's a, it has the right dimensions. All right, now we can factor. That's no problem. And now we'll look at the subtraction, A minus lambda I. So remember, A is a two by two matrix. This identity will need to be a two by two times the scalar is still two by two. So I have a two by two, subtract another two by two. That's totally okay to do. They got the exact same dimensions, no problem. We can subtract. All right, so how do we solve for X? Oh man, it's still not easy. So I taught you a vocabulary word that you hopefully didn't forget. What are we looking at? I'll let B equal A minus lambda I. What are we looking at here? We just learned it last class or the one before. Null space. I know all of you were thinking that. That definitely looks like the null space. All right, so we have solved these problems before. The answer is all the vectors in the null space are the ones that make this equation true. Now it's a little weird because it's a null space of this a minus lambda i vector, but that's what we're going for. So I'll just write this down. So we want the null of a minus lambda I. That's what we'll be going for. We've done null space computations before. That's not a problem. We're about to do another one right now. So let's line up everything with our particular matrix here. So I'm doing the same exact algebra steps. I'm taking probably more steps than you might normally need, but I'm just going really slow and doing only one algebra step at a time. Because we are doing matrix algebra. A little bit more tricky than normal algebra because you don't have commutativity and you can't always subtract everything that you want to subtract, as we just saw. You can't just subtract numbers and matrices. All right, so now we can subtract. We got two two by twos. So one minus five is negative four. 2 minus 0 is 2, 4 minus 0 is 4, and 3 minus 5 is negative 2. All right, find the null space. So all you do, augment it with zeros and row reduce. That's all you need to do. You could write out the linear equations, but I did that a few times before. I'm just gonna jump right into the matrix here. So 
So I'm going to use the coordinates a, b for x like we were using earlier. Little a, little b. I know we're using capital A for our matrix. So we have one free variable, b is free. So I'm going to let b equal t. And then negative 4a equals negative 2b. So a equals 1 half b, which is 1 half t. So our a, b is 1 half t, t which I'll write as t times 1 half 1. So that is our null space, all multiples of this 1 half 1 matrix. So that is our entire null space right there. It's all the solutions that we just found because we're professionals at finding solutions of a linear system of two equations, two unknowns. You better be an expert because I'm pretty sure you learned that in Algebra 1. So, so is this just saying that uh, any vector that the A is half of the Y will yeah. get you, so you could write like any, any vector where the A is half of Y and that'll be your... Uh, yeah, so I notoriously don't like fractions. So what I can do, so I could alternatively, any non-zero multiple of this vector, one half one, will describe our set, will describe our subspace. Our, I'll call it the null space. So I'm going to choose a more reasonable vector. Let's choose 1, 2. That is what t value would give me 1, 2? Two. 2. So might as well just pick an easier multiple. All right, so I'm going to choose 1, 2. So our null space of a minus lambda i is equal to, in set notation, I could write it as 1, 2, t, such that t is any scalar. So that would be one way to write the null space right there. And it turns out any non-zero multiple of this vector is an eigenvector. So you can choose whatever multiple you want. I like this one right here, one, two. It's got nice positive numbers, no fractions. That makes me happy. There's even a one in there. I want to think better if there was a zero in there too. But that's pretty good. All right, so that is our null space. So this is one way to compute a null space if you know an eigenvalue. So if you know an eigenvalue, it turns into a null space question if you do a little algebra. If you know an eigenvector, it's a much easier problem. We'll go back up to what we did earlier. If you know the eigenvector, you just multiply, and that should basically tell you your eigenvalue right away. So no algebra needed. You just multiply out, and that should tell you what your scalar is. So now we're going to have definition for the eigenspace. So lambda will be an eigenvalue of A. Let S be all the eigenvectors of lambda. Now we just saw above all the eigenvectors come from the null space, which is always going to be a subspace. So all the eigenvectors for a particular eigenvalue will form a subspace because it's defined as the null space here. So S is going to be all the eigenvectors of lambda
and let e lambda equal the span of s. Now a lot of times you're only going to have one eigenvector that's independent. Sometimes you'll have two. Very rarely you'll have three or more. But it's pretty common to only have one. Occasionally you'll see two. So if you take the span, we call this the eigenspace of lambda. I think eigen is lower case, not uppercase, because if you're f if you were famous enough and lived long enough ago, you're no longer capitalized anymore. You just get lower case. So this span right here is equal to the null space of a minus lambda i. So let's crank up dimensions to three by three. We got seven one negative two negative three three six two two two. So show six is an eigenvalue, and then find e six. So when in doubt, start with the definition, ax equals lambda x. So we know a, we know lambda. Let's do a tiny bit of algebra here. So I am doing that standard subtraction, then factoring with the identity. And now we'll fill in a minus lambda i so you're going to subtract and then find the null space we'll call this capital B and you will find null of b. How many dimension or how many uh, what dimensional space does the vector x live in? You have to multiply it by a, so there's really no choice. It's got to be in three dimensional space. So let's call the components A, B, C. Just keep it consistent like it was with the last problem. So you need to find A, B, and C, or what combinations of A, B, and C will put us in the uh, eigenspace here. All right, so find this matrix B and then the null space. And you should be expecting at least one free variable. Occasionally, you're going to find a second free variable. Very rarely, you'll find a third.
Do you usually uh, see equal S or T? Or does it matter? It doesn't matter which what letters you're going to use. You need one letter for each free variable, yeah, for sure. That doesn't matter. But if you have two, it doesn't matter the order. I generally use S and T. Those are the standard ones. Any questions on getting B before I go? Make sure I don't make a mistake or else all my row operations won't matter. So we got the, all got the same B. All right. We have two free variables here. So usually, more, most commonly, you're going to see one free variable. If you see no free variables, that means you don't have an eigenvalue. So if I just pick some other number that's not 6, most likely it won't be an eigenvalue. And so I will not have any free variables. So you should be expecting at least one free variable if you have an eigenvalue. I'm going to let B equal S, C equal T. These are my free variables. So I'm solving for A. A is going to equal negative B plus 2C. So that is negative S plus 2T. And of course, B is 1s. It's a little silly. I'm going to write plus 0t right here. And then c is 0s plus 1t. So if I write that in vector form, And my S's look like fives. I've tried to fix that. My fives have a little flatter part at the top, but my S's do look like fives. And I can write this as one negative one one zero S plus two zero one T. So any questions on laying this out in this form here? 
All right, how many dimensions is our null space? Two dimensions, so our null space is two dimensions. And we can write it down, it's just this, all linear combinations of these two vectors. So our null of our a minus lambda i, so this is also known as e6. And I can write it a few different ways. If I write it in set notation, I'll write it exactly the way it's written out here. So it's any combination of those two such that S and T are real numbers. All right, now that we are quite far in the quarter, what could I call this? What, there's a much nicer way to describe this set. Span of the two. So it's written out as linear combinations of the two. That is what the span is. So we can be much more, uh, use a much more specific way of describing it. So it's the span of that vector and this one. Now if you have two vectors, it's linear independence is very easy to see without doing any work. If they're not multiples of each other and none of them are zero then they are independent. So these are independent, this is a basis. So real quick, why is that E6? Because uh, the 6 stands for the lambda value of 6. And E stands for eigenspace. Oh, because our, our original eigenvalue was 6. Correct, oh, yes. Okay. So if we just put another number in there, very unlikely it will be an eigenvalue. If you didn't know it, you wouldn't be able to compute it. Right. You would need a number in for okay. lambda. Gotcha. Uh, now, how do we find lambdas is way more difficult question, okay. which we're gonna have to learn some other, some other math for that. So what we just found is all of the basically the x vectors that you can multiply by both the a matrix and the lambda value get the same. Yep, all we did was find, and of course our lambda was six, but we just found all vectors x that had this with this property with the specific a and six in here. So that's all we're doing. So the most important thing is what I just put on the board. That's the most important thing to remember about eigen anything, is this. Right here. And make sure you know lambda is a scalar, not not a matrix. Won't work out if lambda is a matrix. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna find eigen vectors and values geometrically. Find eigen vectors and values geometrically. So what we're going to use here is intuition and not a algorithm. So we're going to just use some intuition and see if we can figure out in this particular example what the eigenvalues and vectors are when A, so I better pick a simple matrix. So this is a pretty simple matrix. It's almost the identity. Actually, let's go even simpler. Let's take the identity matrix. What is Ix? X. So what would lambda be in this case? One. So in this case, right here, if your matrix is the identity, your lambda will be one. <coughs> All right, so that was too easy. 
So let's uh, choose a different A. That one's too easy. Oh, we didn't find the eigenvectors yet. All, right. All I did was find the eigenvalue. All right, so how do we find the eigenvectors once you know a value? You make that weird null space and then compute it. So we get AX equals lambda X. So I'll skip to that uh, algebra we've done a few times now. And So we got the identity minus the identity. So our matrix will be the zero matrix, not one we see too often. All right, what vectors X will have this property? All of them. Doesn't matter what coordinates you put in because you're gonna be multiplying them by zero, adding it, multiplying by zero, adding it. So X is any uh, vector in R2. It is important it's in R2. And so what that means is E1 will be all vectors in two-dimensional space. So I can just write E1 is R2. So it's every vector in two-dimensional space. Now why does this make sense? If you use a little more intuition, what does the matrix A do when you multiply any vector by the matrix A? It's itself, so it basically does nothing. So that would be the same as multiplying by the number one. So that makes perfect sense. Your matrix doesn't change your vectors, so your eigenvalue is one, and all your vectors are eigenvectors. So we'll do a non-trivial example tomorrow. And you'll take your quiz.